Intimidation is a nasty thing. It can keep you from finishing or even starting a project in the first place. Perhaps it's an unjustified fear of the unknown. You don't want to start a project because you're unsure of the precise steps required to complete that project. And so it was with me in this handrail. Now I just need to match it up with this side and strike a line right there. And now I can just make a straight cut right there and attach this new piece on the other end and we should be good to go. As you can see, I sanded the seam down just a little bit so that it would match as well as it could. And with that done, I can add a stain and then a clear coat for the top coat. So for some context, just over two years ago, I put in an order for 222 2x4s and 62 sheets of drywall. This was the start of our basement project where I finished out approximately 800 square feet of living area. This included a full bathroom, wet bar and dining area, workout room, living room, and a dedicated office space. And little did I know, but this was finally the start of my YouTube channel starting to gain some traction with this video right here. Anyways, two years later and the basement is complete, minus this handrail. It's been on my list for quite some time now, so why didn't I just knock it out? Well, I didn't know how to. What do I start with? What are the components that I need for this project? And is this the look that we're going for? Basically, there were a lot of variables with this project that kept me from getting started. But when I get into a paralyzing situation like this, I try to remember to start with step one. Obviously, right? But sometimes we forget that. Often we see a project as one giant leap that we need to conquer, rather than a whole bunch of small steps that build upon each other. And that's also why this isn't one of my typical how-to videos, but more of a how I did this video. In other words, I'm not sure if what I did was totally correct, but this is how I completed this project. And if it's not correct, I guess let me know in the comments down below. So up until this point you've seen me, step one, modify the existing handrail and reinstall it. And step two, cut and finish a board for the top of this angled wall. Step three is going to be cutting the newel post down to size. To do this, I connected a string back to the top portion of the handrail, then to the newel post. The string represented the top of the handrail and I used this to gauge how much I needed to cut off of the newel post. I struck a line on the post and then used that line to adjust the angle on my miter saw. Once I had that angle dialed in, I cut off the portion of the post that was no longer needed. Alright, so quick tip time. So I'm working on cutting down this newel post because it's just a little bit too tall. And you can see it's got some of these features right here that kind of kick out that profile of this post. And that's all fine and dandy, um, except for when it goes time to cut it. And I try to bump this back side of this post up against the fence. So if I do that, now if we look at the back, you can see um, that the fence is up against this feature and it's creating a little bit of a gap on this end, but not on that end. So essentially it's taking what would be referencing the fence straight on and it's kicking it out like that. Actually, rather like this. <laughs> so that's not good because we need to have something to reference it up against and preferably that would be a straight uh, back fence. So my solution to that is to take a couple pieces. I've got some plywood here. Just make sure that both pieces are the same thickness and stick one back there and another one a little bit further down. Now we can push this up against here like that and you can see that the fence is no longer in contact with this profile right here and so now what i'm referencing off of is essentially those two pieces of plywood so it's kicking it out just enough and now i'm past this feature right here and i can reference the fence so just a quick tip and I wasn't able to cut all the way through on the one side, so I had to flip the post over and swing the miter saw the other way to finish the cut. So now that I've got the newel post cut down to size, I also need to cut down this mounting block. So basically how this works is this mounting block gets installed first, I'll bolt it down in place, and then this newel post kind of slips over the top of it. But as you can see, we're going to need to cut this down at that same angle. So I'm actually going to push this all the way in until it bottoms out, and then just bring it out just slightly and strike a line. 
And the reason that I brought it out just slightly is that after I mount this, I don't want the newel post to bottom out on this and get hung up on this and then make like a little gap between here and that board that's on that slant on the side of the stair. I want this newel post to come all the way down flush with that board. So just gives me a little bit of clearance. So let me go ahead and make this cut. Before I made the cut on the mounting block, I pre-drilled some holes for the leg bolts I would drive in later. Then I proceeded to cut the mounting block to size. With the block cut to size, I could line it up so that a leg bolt would hit a stud in the wall. Then I applied some construction adhesive to the block and placed it in the bottom of the newel post. I figured this would eliminate some measuring and I could just line up where I wanted the post to be and the blocking would fall in the correct spot as well. I let the adhesive set up for a few minutes, then I removed the post and placed tape around it so I could see if the post moved as I drove in the leg bolts. Then I could pre-drill and drive in the leg bolts. With the block mounted in place, I applied some more construction adhesive to it and then slipped the post over the top, driving in screws from either side. And as I was mounting this post, I was constantly checking for plumb. And with the post plumb, I drove in a final 6 inch screw from the end. Man, this project is really testing me right now. So on top of all the intimidating things that have kept me from starting this project for about a year and a half to two years by now, um, I can't get the stain to match. So this is all new, like I've showed you up to this point. And then this handrail is existing that I kind of cut in half to modify it for this open part of the wall. So. I think instead of going to the store and buying a new section and starting fresh with the stain, although it's really tempting to do, I think I'm going to save the money and just sand this down and then restain it. And hopefully it will match a little bit closer to these pieces down here. So I guess let's bring this up to the shop and start sanding it down. And to my surprise, it really didn't take much effort to sand this railing down and reapply the stain. So I'm happy that I decided to go this route. Cool. So I think I got the stain matching now, so we're all good there. Now let's attach this to the wall up there and the post down here. All right, and I'm just gonna use my tape measure and make sure that this is centered on the post. And honestly, I'm just kinda eyeballing this, but you could always measure it. Now just to pin it in place before I throw some screws in, I'm just going to go back to the brad nailer. There we go, now let's get the opposite end. Alright, so that's in place, now I'm just going to add some screws for strength. So the unfortunate part about this is I've got a lot of holes to fill afterwards and try to color match it, but I guess I just don't see a way around it. I don't know how to drill here at an angle and also hit the wall. So I'm going from the top. And I'm using some three inch screws for this. And actually on this side, I will be able to drive the screws in from the bottom here. All right, so the next thing I gotta do is start laying out where I'm gonna have these vertical spindles or balusters, whatever they're called. I got pretty fortunate that this bottom plate from the newel post to this wall is 52 inches. That's easily divisible by four, so I'm just gonna start marking out every four inches on this bottom. And basically the tape is there to make it easier to see the pencil line. Now on each one of these marks, I want to make sure that it's centered on this bottom plate. So we have a six inch board right here. So we'll put a cross mark at the three inch mark. Now that I've got these all marked out on this bottom plate, I need a way to transfer those marks straight up to the underside of this rail. And in my case, I already have this, so I'm just gonna bust out this laser. That's gonna make really quick work of it. I'll just line it up on my bottom mark and then it'll shoot a little laser beam. <laughs> up to the underside of here and I can make that mark on the underside of this rail. And if you don't have a laser, you can always use a four foot level to do the same thing. 
I just happen to have this and it's gonna work out well. And then the cool thing about the underside of a handrail, and I think it's pretty typical, is that they cut the center line in on it, uh, just to, I'm assuming, to help you line up things where you need them to be. So I don't have to measure across, I can just find that center line through the tape, and now I've got my point right there. All right, so for the bottom plate, I'm gonna be using a three quarter inch Forstner bit, and then for the underside of the handrail, I'm gonna be using a half inch. Also, I'm talking quietly because the baby's sleeping. I'm only going about a half an inch deep on this, which actually turns out to be that line right there. And another added benefit for the blue tape is it helps uh, reduce the chip out. And with all the holes drilled, I can measure between the top of the baseboard and the underside of the handrail, adding approximately an inch to this dimension. Now you may need to adjust this measurement depending on how deep you drill your holes. And to cut the metal spindles to length, I used a metal cutting blade in my jigsaw and it actually worked better than I thought it would. And I forgot to mention, I drilled the hole a little bit deeper in the handrail than I did the baseboard so that when it came time to install the spindles, I inserted them in the handrail first and then could drop them down into the baseboard. Then I slid the caps in place to cover up the roughness of the holes and that was basically it. So if you're facing an intimidating project and you keep putting it off, remember, just take it one step at a time. Thanks for watching.